are some giants in filmmaking this year in the Cannes Film Festival competition. Six of the directors have already won the big prize, the Palme d'Or, and three of those have won it twice. 82-year-old veteran Ken Loach is one of them. He's here with his gut-wrenching drama, Sorry We Missed You, about a family struggling against financial hardship in today's Britain. Hello. 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 Congratulations on the film. Yeah, thanks very much. Last time we met you in Cannes, you said you were retiring. What happened? Um, well, I only said it once, but it got repeated, really. Um, it was a silly thing to say, but there you go. <laughs> um, but I, I, I work with some good pals, and it's difficult to stop, you know. I, Daniel Blake, which won the Palm d'Or in Cannes a few years ago, cast a spotlight on the UK's broken welfare system. Mm, this mm. film seems to have an even more universal um, quality, reflecting the workers of people around the globe. Mm, mm, Was that your intention? Mm. Well, the, the issues of, of insecure work, um, I mean, they call it the gig economy, you know, where people work through agencies or their zero hours contracts where there's no commitment from the employer to give a certain amount of work and wages. Wages won't support a family. They won't even support an individual for often, you know, if it's casual work. Um, so-called self-employed, all these things apply across Europe and, and across the world. So, you know, if you tell a story about the consequences of insecure work and insecure income on a family that's already in debt, it should, it, it, if it's OK, it should have a resonance, really, around many countries. It's all right, Ricky, it's nothing to worry about. Hitting your figures and getting good feedback, everything's going all right. Just. Did you have somebody in the van with you on Saturday gone? Oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's my daughter, Liza Jane, right? Oh, sorry, mate, we can't have that. Well, it's, it's my van. My insurance, it's my daughter. I thought it was my business. Yeah, it is, but it's our franchise, right? Just had a complaint from one of the clients. Nobody fucks with them ever, mate, all right? It's just one of the first commandments, all right? Cheers. We tend to think of technology as fostering progress, mm. but your film calls that into question. Um, are technological developments leading our societies towards new forms of enslavement, do you think? No, capitalism is doing that. The technology is neutral, knowledge is neutral. It's what use we make of it, it's who owns it, who controls it. When I was y a lot younger, we were told we had to be educated for our leisure time, because technology would remove a lot of jobs we didn't need to do. Well, anybody who knows how business works knows that is a fantasy because technology will be used to cut labour costs. Because if one business doesn't do it, the other one will. So they have to compete. They have to use the new technology to cut their costs. And that means greater exploitation and more people out of work. It's inevitable. There is no other way capitalism can work because it's about free market competition. That's the problem with the European Union. It's based on a free market. And that means increased exploitation. So. The knowledge is neutral, but if we are to use it for everyone's benefit, we have to own things in common, then we can share it. Do you think society today is making families fall apart? Well, the pressures from this kind of work are very strong and very destructive. So, yes, yes, it causes division. Have you been in school today? Seb. How many days off have you had in the last month? Do you know what I mean? Your mum are going to get dragged in. They sent a letter about it last month, said we're going to get a fine, love. I know, but love. I don't know what's got into you, I really don't. You're a smart kid just like Liza. You used to be in all the top sets. What is going on? Just give yourself some choices, mate. Do you think by focusing on the Brexit debate, uh, has Britain lost sight of ordinary people's lives? Oh, so much complexity wrapped up in that. The Brexit debate was a phony debate. It was two choices between two versions of the right wing. Those who wanted to stay in Europe, the we thought they, they could exploit people very sufficiently by accepting a few minor restrictions to support workers' rights or to protect the environment. The other version of the right wing was, no, we can exploit people better 
without the market because we won't have the minor restrictions on labour and the economy and then the environment. Um, the, the, the left alternative, which is we need a solidarity with European countries, but not based on this economic model, was never put. Has it blinded us to everything else? Yeah, sure, but that, that's the media misunderstanding or consciously choosing to ignore other alternatives. Because basically, whether it's the BBC moving to the right, they're all committed to the market economy. They don't see that as the issue under, undermining everything. This festival has been described as a very political kind of film festival. You've been making films for more than 50 years. Yeah, in, this, <laughs> in this vast experience, do you think that film can lead to change? It might help in a very small way by um, developing different ways of looking at things. Um, direct political change, probably not. Daniel Blake was about the, how the state is using Poverty is punishing poverty. It uses hunger as a weapon. The government, far from changing anything, is more deeply entrenched in that vicious policy. In the last year alone, the use of food banks went up 18% in one year. So now there's well over 2 million food parcels being handed out each year, uh, over half a million of them to children. They haven't budged an inch, you know. Having said the film showed that that, that was happening, said it was fiction. And then um, Damien Green, who subsequently disgraced himself and had to leave government, um, was, was asked uh, how he knew. He said, well, the film's... Um, I haven't seen the film, but I've seen the trailers. Well, there was only one trailer, so perhaps he saw the same trailer several times. God knows. I mean, you know, the man was found out. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They'll carry on. You know, they, they can't be convinced. They have to be removed. The film doesn't have a happy ending. You don't give the people an exit. No. Are you feeling pessimistic about the future? Um, no, I, I think it's a struggle. Politics is a struggle. There is, there's no end in sight, you know, because there are competing interests and we have to mobilise our... the vast majority of people against the those who own and control and make vast profits. So it's a struggle and, and it's down to us to organise and to understand, first of all. Ken Loach, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you, thank you. Now to two filmmaking brothers who have also won the big prize, the Palme d'Or twice. Young Ahmed is the Dardenne's eighth film in competition Let's go meet these legendary siblings. I'm at Dawn. Du jeune son. Un, deux, trois. Bonjour. Nous sommes les frères Dardenne, Luc, Jean-Pierre. Je lui pose la première ou la deuxième, ma question. Première. Mm -hmm. Ça Alors, parle de ton frère, je crois. On parle de mon frère. Ouais. Le jeune Ahmed est en compétition officielle. De quoi parle le film C'est l'histoire d'un jeune garçon de 13 ans, Ahmed qui est pris entre l'absolutisme de pureté que lui inculque son imam et les appels, la, les appels de la vie. Il y a un mois, tu étais tout le temps à jouer à la PlayStation avec Karim. Tu enlevé tous les posters de ta chambre. Tu serais d'accord qu'on discute du Coran une fois par semaine tous les deux Je peux pas lire le Coran avec une femme. Tu préfères le lire avec un imam qui est un menteur C'est pas un menteur. Si, non, c'est un menteur, Ahmed. Ahmed Le mieux, c'est que je te conduise tout de suite à la police pour pas qu'il puisse dire que c'est la mosquée qui t'a caché. Ils vont m'enfermer longtemps. Non, t'es trop jeune, hein. peut-être un mois ou deux. La montée du fanatisme religieux est de plus en plus présente au cinéma. Pourquoi est-ce important que les artistes parlent de ce problème Parce que le mot mission est peut-être un peu... Un... peut-être pas adapté, mais je veux quand même l'employer. Une des, une des raisons d'être de la création artistique, en tout cas pour une partie d'entre elles, c'est d'être en synchrone avec son temps et d'essayer, de, à travers son, sa pratique artistique, de proposer une, un éclairage, une réponse, une résistance à, à l'époque dans laquelle nous vivons. C'est à moi maintenant, je t'en pose une question. Qu'est-ce qui t'énerve le plus chez moi sur un plateau de tournage ah, On parle de ton frère, je crois. On parle de mon frère, oui. Je dirais rien, euh... 
Voilà, c'est ma réponse. Rien. Okay, on lui dira. On lui dira. Oui, on lui dira. On dira. Question dans le même sens, à propos de mon frère. Quelle est la plus belle qualité de cinéaste de votre frère Pour moi, il me semble que c'est sa, sa plus grande qualité, comme c'est de travailler avec son frère. <rire> oui, je voilà, dirais ça, voilà. non Oui, oui, je pense oui, que c'est sa grande qualité. Oui. Oh, son derrière. frère qui ne l'énerve pas. Donc, non, voilà. non, hum? non, non, ça va. Oh là, mon Dieu. Pedro Almodovar, Quentin Tarantino, Ken Loach ou encore Terence Malik sont aussi en liste pour la Palme d'Or. Lequel t'impressionne le plus oh, Ils ont fait des grands films, tous les quatre, et que j'ai adoré, okay. que j'ai beaucoup aimé vraiment et, et que je revois d'ailleurs. Nous pourrions réaliser un triplé historique en remportant une nouvelle palme d'or. Es-tu sous pression Je suis sous pression parce que le film va passer le 20. Et euh, voilà, j'attends voilà, avec anxiété euh, et en espérant que ça se passe bien cette projection du 20. Le voilà. reste, c'est d'un autre ordre. Et là, je ne peux pas dire, c'est pas... Je voilà. me permets de reprendre tes mots, je dirais la même chose. Alors, euh, je te remercie d'avoir répondu à mes questions avec beaucoup de sagacité et de, et moi et de, de pertinence. Et moi de même. There are 21 filmmakers vying for Cannes' top prize, the Palme d'Or. The winner will be announced on Saturday night. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.